Hey guys, it's uh, it's me again, and today is June 6, 2023, and uh, ICT just came out with a new video, so I'm going to be reviewing that, studying that, working on that soon. Um, but before I do, the reason I upload uh, my videos to YouTube is really not because I expect to get any views on them, but it's more just to... Um, to journal and document my own thoughts uh, as I transition into wanting to trade uh, full-time and make a life out of this and coming to master myself is the first step and so one of the things that I wanted to make a video on really more of a podcast is I wanted to talk about all of the things that cloud judgment and some things that if you're brand new to trading and you're literally just putting money in into account and you haven't you haven't thought you haven't introspected yet <clears throat> you know I'm gonna get right into some of the things that I think I know cloud my judgment so number one I'm a just gonna get it out there like I'm a devastatingly addicted gambling addict and it's part of you know it's the part of the reason why uh, it is that's even got me into the financial markets. So that's a beast that I have to battle with. That's a personal affliction, whatever, that I have to battle with and control um, if I want to do this for for a living, to make income, consistent income from it, is I have to battle that inner gambling addict. But I'm going to go through 1 through 10 here and talking about some of the things that cloud judgment so you when you're trading you want to be in a state of focus not necessarily a flow state because a flow state is uh, a mental state in which you might be numb to the market gyrations and your P&L flow. I, you need to be aware. You need to be there. You need to be present, and you need to be mindful. So I wouldn't say that you want to get into like a trance. You want to be focused, be balanced. Um, <coughs> you want to be very focused. That's the key. That's the key to the market. So let's talk about all of the all of the things that when you're trading must go. So number one, the the biggest issue that I have found for me, and you've probably found the same thing, is is not when you lose money. When you lose money, whether it's in a demo, prop account, live account, and it, let's say you haven't blown up your account, right? You got stopped out, or you've taken a loss for the day. You haven't blown out your account. You're gonna feel motivated if you want to do this for a living and if you want to do this full time you're gonna feel motivated after a loss to get back in there and analyze your mistakes and and improve your strategy whatever the biggest problem that you're gonna have is not when you lose money in my opinion it's it's right when you make money and it's that winners high it's the it, it's very short-lived and when you see that the number on your screen it can go higher than you ever thought it could at the start of the day you can have a thousand dollars, and then at the end of the day, so, or sometime in the trading day, you're going to be at like five thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. There are times where you're going to make so much money quickly, more money than you expected, because you're going to have expectations of, oh, this is how much money I can make. The the variance in trading, your P and L swings are going to go both ways, and if you figure out how to trade, hopefully, it generally goes in one direction, the right direction. Winner's high is, is right after you've won a nice trade or you've won a series of nice trades. And it's, 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 a, it's multiple things. So number one, you feel ego inflated. You feel like the, that you've figured out the market and you are Mr. Hotshot. And you're sitting, at, you're, you're sitting on the altar on high. You're sitting at the top of the, mountain, the mountaintop. And you want to just go and spread the gospel of how smart you are and how you can time the market 
and your ego is going to be huge because you just turned five hundred dollars into two thousand dollars in five minutes and that winner's high is exactly what's going to make you go from five hundred dollars to two thousand dollars back to zero dollars uh, and it can happen fast it can happen within five minutes there there's no time sp- it can happen instantly all of the, in these electronic markets things can happen so fast you're done your life is over quickly and so you have to know that going in these algorithms are ruthless they don't care about you and they will they will destroy you um, if, if you do not respect the market if you get in there and you win trades and you make way more money than you thought possible way more money than you were expecting and you feel that your ego is coming on you know that winner's high is number one at first it's elation right it's just that raw happiness of having done something well and and wow that number is bigger than it was before and here's all my my you know all of your all of your dreams and you're thinking about how much money you can make and oh there it is in your account at that point your judgment is clouded and you think to yourself at that time at that moment when you're feeling this winner's high and that serotonin rush dopamine rush I think actually it's serotonin but you need to step away from your screen at that point you need to log out of your brokerage account you need to flatten your positions and you need to walk away because your judgment is clouded as soon as you feel that your ego is larger that you figured out this beast that you figured out the gyrations in the market that you you cannot be beaten you need to you need to go you need to leave you need to back away from your screen close it go take go take a walk you know play a video game or you need to go look at your demo account and just watch price action without trading. I wouldn't recommend that. I'd recommend just going away, and maybe watching an ICT video. I don't know. But as soon as you get that winner's hype, your judgment is clouded. <clears throat> you need to recognize that. And if you're ever going to really make the big money that is possible, th- this business is infinitely scalable. There's no amount of contracts that you can ever put on. At some point, you'd have to get, uh, I think, a chair with the CME that so many contracts for an individual trader that's that'd be crazy but you know guys this this is not a business that is capped at a yearly salary I mean if you really figure this stuff out and you and you go up and up and up you could be throwing you could make a hundred thousand dollars in a day I mean it's 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 infinitely scalable because it's just numbers on a screen the, but getting the numbers up on the screen it, you you can't be a robot. You're never going to be a robot. You're always going to have emotions. I don't personally believe that you should be perfectly like a Marcus Aurelius sort of stoic and not feel something, but you need to recognize when your judgment is clouded. So when you get that winner's high and your account is going up and up and up and you just you feel that you are the shit, you need to leave. Um, so that's that's one thing. The next is loser's low, and that's you've taken a loss and you're sad I call it losers row like winners high losers low your judgment is also clouded because along with losers low is going to come frustration um, impatience um, disbelief you know you were up a hundred dollars on the day you were up two hundred dollars on the day and now you're up fifty and you're going to want to chase chase it back and you fucked up and you know that you fucked up it's only you clicking the buttons and you're mad at yourself and you want to take revenge on the market that that point your your judgment is also clouded and you need to leave and so it's the two extremes right basically when you win a trade you should probably leave and when you lose a trade you should probably leave until you really get your emotions and you, and you master yourself in either scenario, when you flatten a trade, you should probably take a break. Um, the third one is frustration. The um, you know you were calling the market, whatever asset you were looking at, you were in sync with it. You felt like you understood what it was wanting to do, what the higher time frame draw on liquidity was, um, entry models, exit models, profit targets. They're all being you know they're all they're it's just not doing what you think it's going to do, and so your analysis you know the market's not moving as fast as you want it's a high resistance liquidity run it's consolidating it's chopping um, it's forming a range that you can't you don't have a good read on and at the end of the day you're gonna get frustrated you're gonna over leverage 
and that's also a cloud on judgment. So frustration is a big cloud on judgment. Number four, sadness. Obviously, you know, you're sad at how much money you've lost, <laughs> or even if you've been making money, you're sad that you have less than you did yesterday. <laughs> that's a cloud on judgment. The number five is anxiety. And what is anxiety? I'm, I'm generally saying, especially when you are currently up in a position, if you're up a lot of money and it's open and you have a profit target in mind, it could be double bottom, double low, liquidity pool is usually going to be your ICT targets, right? Where other people stops are liquidity pool. Um, sometimes it's just not going to get all the way there. And when you get that feeling of anxiety, your judgment is clouded. And you, when your judgment is clouded, you're anxious, you're nervous, or you're frustrated, or you're feeling winner's high, or your ego is inflated, or whatever, and your judgment is clouded, you will not see the market correctly. Because your reticular activation system, your, um, your ability to recognize key patterns in gyrating price action that feels random, it's not random, it's controlled, it's rigged, it's going somewhere, it's purposeful, it's not random, but your ability to recognize multiple, I mean, think about when you're ICT trading, you are having to recognize multiple patterns simultaneously on multiple time frames while also bearing in mind what time of day it is, what day of the week is it, what week of the month is it, what quarter, all of that. Your seasonal tendencies, daily tendencies, stock exchange opens. You have to keep a lot of things um, a lot of things in mind and hopefully over time if you practice your ICT skills and you you practice your PD arrays and you practice your entries and you learn to think about the market in the way in which he teaches which is basically liquidity resting orders pending orders where are the pending orders where are the resting orders um, is the market providing you a setup model um, imbalance rebalance inefficiencies gaps, liquidity voids, uh, these sorts of things. It's a very complex thought process. And even if the idea is simple, to a lot of people, if you just saw it, you're like, oh, you made one trade a day and the market went up 20 points and you were on it and that was it. No, but what really went into that was a lot of confluence, a lot of pattern recognition, a lot of reticular activation um, you you're you have to here's here and here's the thing when you're looking at the static chart at the end of the day and when you are studying price action in hindsight and it's not moving it's very valuable and you should be doing that but it does not feel the same whatsoever as when you are trading a live market and it, and the candles are moving and price is moving and your p l is moving when those things are happening when the market is open especially around its volatile times you have to quickly make like snap, 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 snap. You got to quickly make decisions on what the market is doing now because it's changing all the time. Um, it has its higher time, time frame draws. It has its weekly draws, daily draws, monthly draws, quarterly draws, um, seasonal tendencies. So there's there are higher time frame draws, but within you know price might be tugged by a weekly imbalance, but it's gonna it's gonna consolidate around a daily order block like what the Russell did today. I might talk about that later, but the Russell basically is 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 pulling up into a, a fair value gap on the weekly chart, but it hit a break it hit a breaker block on the daily chart, and it ended up in the lunch session consolidating. My point is, is that whenever your judgment is clouded, you're not going to see things correctly. You just won't, and so you need to recognize when your ego is inflated, or when you're sad, or when you're frustrated, or when you're discontent, or when you're anxious. You have to recognize that and you have to go away. You've got to flatten or you've got to severely lower the leverage and just leave one contract on, leave a micro on and go away because you are not going to see the patterns forming as they form in the manner in which you should. The only way that you're going to do that is if you're cool, calm, collected and focused. That's it. And after doing it and seeing the patterns for months and months and months and day on day on day on day on, you end up seeing all of the patterns and training your mind to see the patterns I'm calling them patterns. They're fractals. You're going to end up seeing the salient information, the liquidity in the market, the liquidity on the chart, the draws. The most important thing, which is where your draw on liquidity is, you're going to end up seeing that, that subconsciously. 
you're going to see it as it's happening and you're going to see it subconsciously and so your brain is going to process that information faster than um, conscious level like on a subconscious level it's just going to come into you without even thinking but that's only going to happen if you're cool calm collected and you've and you've done it day in and day out for a long time disbelief that disbelief also clouds judgment and disbelief can come in when you've lost a lot of money and it can come in also when you've made a lot of money and I've really harped on that now and you're thinking to yourself oh well if I made a lot of money uh, I know how to stop I'll just yeah two thousand dollars is good enough for me not when your profit target is 50 points higher I mean not when your idea is much larger than that and you get greedy you get greedy because you have a profit target in mind and you forget that the, the only thing you're trying to do here is make money. So even if you're severely short of your profit target, if you made money from the market, if you extracted funds from the market, that's it. That's all that matters. Even if, even if it, you know, you end up missing a big part of the move, if you made money, that's it. That's all that matters. So my point being is that I don't think that you should be um, a computer you, you should have emotions and you you will have emotions, but that disbelief is um, is going to hurt you. It's going to cloud your judgment. So whenever you're feeling that disbelief of what is happening, whether your account has doubled or you've lost all your money, you've blown an account, or you've doubled it, tripled it, either way, you're going to feel some sort of surrealness from a P&L swing, and you need to step away because that's going to cloud your judgment. Um, you know, with all of these things, hopefully over time, you get used to, um, I might double my account in five minutes. And you just ex you accept the fact that there's a great deal of variance in trading, and you can have big swings, and you just have to come to learn to accept it. And hopefully at some point, even if you have a big win, if you have a big winning day, um, it doesn't cloud your judgment going in the future. Because if, if you have a big winning day and it clouds your judgment, you will lose it. I mean, you will blow more than you even made. Uh, that's just how it works. So number seven is, is bragging. So the Bible says that pride cometh before the fall. And if anyone's listening to my rant here, uh, you're probably a young guy in your, you're a teenager, or you're in your mid twenties. And more likely than not, you don't believe in God. And whatever, whatever, you can't believe that I quoted scripture put that aside for a second that you're a materialist or you just you're spiritual but not religious just put that aside for a second all major world religions and all teach all thoughts all all wisdom is going to teach that same concept which is pride cometh before the fall if if you make a bunch of money one day and you go on discord or you go on you go on facebook i don't use facebook if you're a young guy, you're probably going to go on Discord. Let's be frank. But Twitter, whatever. Um, if you start bragging to your family friends, or your Discord friends, your internet friends, if you start bragging, you're going to lose everything. I mean, more money than you put in the account, more money than you made, you cannot do it. Uh, it clouds judgment. It clouds judgment. I don't care if you've made $500,000 in two seconds. You will lose it. If you go and brag, it's, in my opinion, it's the, it's God's way, it's the Lord's way of striking you down. But you might not believe that. You might think that's, that's what a crazy person thinks. So in any event, um, it clouds your judgment. And what the reason why is because once you start bragging, you're setting yourself up on a very high expectation and especially if you do things like you call the market publicly to other people um, you're going to be fixated on that idea and you won't see the opposing idea and frankly you could be wrong and so at one moment you might see the chart and you you recognize that you were your first idea was wrong and the market is actually going in the opposite direction and usually when you haven't bragged then you haven't called the market well you if you're just by yourself you don't really care particularly, right? You think the market's going to do one thing, but if you see that pretty concretely you were wrong and, and you analyze it incorrectly, the market's not going as far as you thought it would, or you just frankly, you got the whole analysis incorrect, uh, that's fine. Well, you, you know, you just need to reassess, like cool down, focus, 
reassess and get a new opinion. Because, I mean, frankly, it doesn't matter what your current... Let me, let me just say this. The only reason... Okay. If you have bragged to other people, you're going to feel ego invested in your call and what you think is the market is going to do. You're going to feel ego invested. And if you're ego invested in something, you're going to be less likely to change your narrative. And the market narrative is constantly changing. And so sometimes you're going to need to change your narrative. That's my point. Envy is another thing. So there's always going to be people out there that are better at trading than you. And frankly, who cares? I mean, you can't be envious of others. And especially the YouTube gurus, guys. You know, I'm starting to recognize why ICT does the demo account thing. Because um, all these guys that are, that are selling courses, they're selling books, they're selling something. Folks, that's really what their income comes from. Uh, that's, uh, I don't think it's because, well, maybe some of them do make some money trading. But I guarantee you that most of their P&L comes from YouTube. Um, it just is what it is. Or affiliate marketing. doesn't necessarily mean they're losing at trading. But you can make more money just trading than any, any YouTube. I mean, it's an infinitely scalable business, especially the highly leveraged futures market. Guys, you can make so much fucking money. Um, you can. Uh, if you're highly skilled at it, you don't really need to... Um, go out and sell YouTube courses and like you can make so much money trading you wouldn't actually need to do that but the YouTube gurus even if they are profitable traders if a part of their system is discretionary you know you can't you can't put his brain in your brain so I understand why ICT does the demo account thing now because you don't you know as soon as you start trying to prove something to someone else your judgment is going to be clouded and you cannot if you're going to if you're going to be successful in the financial markets, your judgment cannot be clouded. And as soon as your judgment is clouded, you're going to lose money um, because the market, the market is driven by algorithms. They're not driven by flat, you know, flesh and blood and bone and emotions and hormones like a human being. They're just scripts. They're just macros. And they don't, you know, they don't care. They don't have emotions. Whereas you do, and you have an ego, and you have emotions, and you want to prove something to your friends and folks. What I'm trying to say is that you can't care what other people think. And uh, the last thing, so yeah, anyways, I totally understand why ICT does the, the demo account thing now because it's not about um, trying to prove something to someone else. Uh, so anyways, um, because, again, even if you're not religious and you, like, you, I personally believe that God does not want you to do that, but even if you you know, you're like, you hate me even saying that because you are you don't believe in God, then just put it this way. If it clouds your judgment, if it raises your serotonin levels, if, if caring about what other people thinks and being ego invested in something, you're going to lose all your money because your judgment is going to be clouded and you won't see the market in a cool, calm, collected, and focused state. And so that that's really it. Um, number 10 is distraction. The, the problem with trading on a computer is that you, you know, or if you're in a, you're in a big family or you got wife, kids, most, if any of you listen to this, you're probably like 19 years old. And so now that, that probably doesn't apply to you, but in any event, whether it's your phone, it's discord, it's social media, it's vid, it's computer games, guys, the financial markets can go up and down. They're very volatile. And even if the instrument that you're looking at right this second is not volatile, something probably is moving. Um, there's a lot of different asset classes out there. And the thing is, is that if you're distracted, you, it's, it's just as much of a cloud on judgment as anything else. So you have to be focused. You, you know, put a podcast on in the background or put music on, but then focus on the market, focus on tra tape reading, focus on um, the ICT setups, patterns, focus number. I mean, the first and foremost thing you should focus on is your higher time frame draw on liquidity. You want to figure out what at all times you constantly reassess this. What is my weekly draw on liquidity? Where is price being tugged towards? Is it, is it being tugged up or tugged down? 
Where is the drawn liquidity? Where is the drawn liquidity? And you just repeat that like on on loop in your brain. Where is the higher time frame drawn liquidity? Where where is the draw? Where is the draw right now? Where is the draw? Because everything's going to come from that. Well, what time of the day is it? Well, it's a bullish. My my weekly drawn liquidity is bullish, and it's London Open. So I expect there's probably going to be some manipulation on London Open. They're probably you know they're probably going to drive London and maybe the news catalyst and maybe equities open, they're probably going to drive it down prior to the big move up in the New York AM session. So if our draw on liquidity is strongly bullish, well, we're expecting manipulation in Globex. We're expecting manipulation on London open. We're expecting manipulation on 830 news release. We're expecting manipulation at, at uh, 930 equities open. We're expecting that lunch is probably going to consolidate or, um, run on stops like lunch you know new york lunch is going to be funky right and then as we come into the p.m session okay we're coming into the p.m session and the p.m session at 1 p.m eastern standard time that could either um could either consolidate especially if we had a big move it's probably going to consolidate if if the a.m session was a big move it could reverse the a.m session or it could uh continue the a.m session so Anyways, your constant everything is built off that higher time frame drawn liquidity, or, or what ICT calls bias or narrative, and it could be a weekly fair value gap, it could be a weekly order block, it could be a combination of both. Preferably, it is a combination of both. Could be a weekly gap, an actual liquidity void, a gap. Um, you know, could be a gap with an order block with a long wick inefficiency, right? Whatever it is. Your draw on liquidity has got to always be in your mind, and you want that weekly draw on liquidity and a daily draw on liquidity, because you might have a weekly draw on liquidity that's up, but your daily your daily bias for today might be down because the market might want to come down, reprice an inefficiency prior to expanding in the opposite direction to go fill a weekly inefficiency. So you need to know on which time frame price is playing, because we're making a huge move, right? We're making a large multiple standard deviation move. We're probably playing on a higher time frame. And what do I mean by that? Like we're probably playing on the weekly. We're probably playing for a move, expanding to a level on the weekly or even the monthly or even the quarterly chart. And so when you see those huge moves, uh, you know, you need to get your mindset out of, well, this is a five minute move. Kind of, sort of. All the time frames are happening at once, but really we're playing on that weekly now. Now we're playing on the weekly level. We're making a huge move. We're playing on a, a higher time frame level. So these are all of the things in trading that as soon as you feel it and you recognize in yourself, you're like, man, I made so much money or I got my, I got my prop account funded. I'm going to go out and make so much money. I just want to go brag to all. I want to brag to my family. I want to brag to my friends. That's when you're going to lose all your money and you're going to lose your funded account. And you're going to lose everything um, because that's, that's going to be a cloud on judgment. That's going to make you ego invested. It's going to ruin the focus and the learning and the study that you need to have if you want to master this craft. You want to get better entries. You want to get better exits. You want to be more accurate at tape reading. You want to be, you want to be in the right markets at the right time because there's what? There's multiple asset classes. You, don't, you can trade on the futures market, index futures, commodities, uh, your precious metals, gold and silver futures, crude oil. Crude oil made a huge move today. It's always making big, big moves. Um, I don't trade crypto myself, but you could trade crypto futures. My point is, is that, guys, if you're spending time on Discord, if you're spending time on YouTube, whatever, and you're bragging, that's when you're going to lose. That's when that's when you're going to start losing. I guarantee you, and I believe it's because God's going to strike you down, but in any event, that's when you're going to start losing. And most of these trading gurus that you see out there the only reason why they might have any longevity is because they're on YouTube and they're selling a course and they're making ad revenue on YouTube. That's it. Uh, and if they make any money from trading, it's not the lion's share of their income, I guarantee you. So that's my rant. That's everything basically to wrap up this rant. All of these things, they have to go. And if you feel yourself at some point, like you just had a big win and you have the winner's high, you need to go away everything as soon as you feel any of these things the desire to brag the desire to be distracted the desire to care what other people think you need to this is a solo game folks it's you and your computer and the market that's it it's a solo game nobody else can do it for you and that's it it's a solo game so anyways 
that's my rant for today. I think I'll probably do some market analysis uh, shortly. Thank you.